Guy Award winner is voted by the local chapter of the Professional Football Writers of America. Uh, the award honors a player for his consistent and outstanding cooperation with the team's beat writers. Not only were you available every week, but you were honest, open, and intentional with your answers. I know you got a lot of awards coming to you this year for your great play, but this is the first one. Congratulations. Yeah, I appreciate that, Clarence. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's happy for you. Um, that being said, as we get ready to continue this press conference, um, the 49ers are known to play bully ball. Can you bully a lion? No, you can't. It, it, it's actually funny you say that. I was having fun with the guys, and I was telling them, like, I'm from Harrisburg, where the bullies get bullied. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's a bully in every gym. There's a bully everywhere you go. But at one point, it's going to take someone to stand up and, you know, and fight. And I ain't never backed down from a challenge, so I would never say you can bully a lion, ever. But just, but just attacking the physicality, they, they have a physical running style with their with their, um, their running offense. And, and how do you guys, are you guys ready for this challenge? Of the I mean, we don't got a choice but to be ready, Clarence. I mean, the game on Sunday, we got about four more days left of preparation. And I don't think nobody's going to hand their equipment and say, hey, we can't beat the 49ers, let's go home. No, we're going to knuckle up, uh, focus in on the details. And, you know, when the run game that good, I mean, everything's small, detailed out, and we're going to have to really focus in and make sure we go out there and play our best football. Um, you know, I think there's one of them teams that uh, has a lot of fight in them. They got a lot of explosive players on offense and defense. And, you know, I think they one play away from being, you know, uh, really good football team too. So I mean, we really got lock in this week. Mike, I think the last time we talked to you was was just before you tested positive. Can can you let us know what sort of symptoms you had and and just where you feel you are from a conditioning standpoint now? If it if it took a little bit away from you that you need to, to catch back up on. Yeah, I had game. some fatigue, some muscle ache, about a sore throat, um, some congestion. You know, I would think it was the cold. But, you know, it turns out I had COVID, so. And, you know, I think because the weather was changing around Dallas so much, I think it could have been that. But, I mean, I think from a standpoint, coming back to I feel great. You know, I got a whole bunch of rest. Uh, I feel like I had a, a extra bye week some of the guys didn't get. So, you know, I feel refreshed. And I like how I felt played after I came off my last bye week. So, hopefully, we could follow up with that. Mike, you've talked a lot with us this year about how much you value the versatility you bring. That's something that Kyle Shanahan does a lot with his players on offense. What are some of the ways you see the 49ers' versatility on offense, and how do you defend against that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's been uh, across the league. Debo has been terrorizing defenses with his versatility at running back and receiver. I mean, you look at Kittle, the way he, he's able to hold blocks and, you know, really go into play action and vertical threat. And I mean, you look at the rest of their running backs. I mean, I think it, it speaks for itself. And I think, you know, you got kind of got a, it's going to be a versatility on versatility. We're going to put it like that, you know. I think um, we got to minimize their explosives and create our turnovers and explosives on defense and get the ball back. The more we could keep, stay off the field and the more we keep our offense on the field, I think we got a great chance of winning this game. Absolutely, and on a non-football note for a minute, uh, CBS will also be broadcasting your game on Nickelodeon for a kid-friendly broadcast. What goes through your mind when you hear that? And if y'all win, would you be willing to be slimed? Yeah, I'd be willing to get slimed. I remember watching, uh, you know, I was a big Nickelodeon Disney guy. And, you know, uh, back in the day when I was watching, you know, SpongeBob and things like that, you know, that speaks to values in my heart. and. I enjoy being a kid, and my son loves SpongeBob, so um, I want to take some pictures for him. He might enjoy them. What do you think this experience is going to be like? Your first playoff game? Have you asked guys that have experienced this before what it's going to, be, what to expect? Um, to be honest, it's just another game. I mean, when week 18, I think the whole you know rookie phase is about over. Um, I got a lot of games in so far, and you know, I think it's just another game. It's another game where you got hold on detail. I think you know every game counted. You know, until we got to this point with the three seed going to this playoff game, and 
Um, nothing's new. We're going to do the same preparation as we've been doing all season. And we, the only difference is this is going to dictate if we're going home or not. And I hope we're not going home. You know, this is going to be a good little stretch we got. And uh, I'm excited for it. What were you like watching the game, the Philly game? Oh, man, I was, I was on the couch, you know, eating. I might have had some wings, maybe some pizza. And, you know, I was just – I was excited for the guys, man. Leighton had the first pick. I was jumping off my couch for him. You know, I was really excited for him. I was excited for Bash and D-Law with the sacks and things. Um, you know, I was rooting the guys on, and I was happy with the outcome. I think you said your family were Cowboy fans growing up. How much do you remember the rivalry – or learn about the rivalry with the 49ers? Uh, I don't know too much about it, man. I, I can only have my own rivals. How much did you talk to, I know you, you and LeVar Arrington are really close. How much did you talk to him this week about the playoffs and the intensity level and raising your game because there's so much on the line? I actually didn't talk to LeVar this week. I probably talked to him more like Friday, Saturday time. He usually lets me like go through the week and He'll hit me up if it's real important to talk to me and, you know, speak about it. But, uh, you know, I had lunch with D-Ware, though, uh, yesterday. And, you know, I got to talk to him about the preparation and what it takes and the mentality that comes with playoffs and things like that. So I thought that was in interesting. And, you know, he helped me, you know, how to prepare the best. So that way, you know, um, I keep my head low and I can stay focused on the things I need to focus on. What were DeMarcus Ware's main points to you about preparing for a playoff game? You know, he was telling me, he's like, you know, uh, obviously it was a different system he was running, but, you know, he said, you're explosive off the line, but you got to learn how to jump off the line and, you know, uh, get a good jump on the count. It's all going to come to film. He's like, man, I love film. Like, I watch film with you anytime you want. And he was telling me about what to look for uh, when you're watching and, you know, all the tendency things like things that I kind of knew, but he kind of went more into detail on things that, you know, I was watching film. I came in early and was watching film with George this morning and um, I kind of had a head start on it. I was like, yeah, you see that right there with the receiver and when they run the toss or whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah, you are getting it. I was like, yeah, George, I, I'm paying more attention than you think, brother. And... <laughs> And, you know, he kind of just laughed and things like that. But that just speaks volumes of relationships that I'm building with the coaches and, you know, um, former players. It seems like the 49ers attack the edge more than a lot of teams. Outside contain is always an emphasis for you guys. But is that being discussed a little bit more this week? And where are the keys to going against this, this offense in that way? Um, I don't think it has to be discussed because at the end of the day, I think the standard is the standard. And I think um, – you know, you need to hold the standard regardless of the opponent. And I mean, I was a kid, stop the run and then let the monsters eat on third down. We got one the first and second down. Congrats on the good guy award, well-deserved. What would it mean to you, Micah, to be a first team all pro as a rookie? Uh, I think it's an extraordinary honor. Uh, it speaks to the work and the position that the Cowboys uh, put me in. And, you know, I think it's just a true blessing. And uh, it, it just makes you want to go harder. I think when you achieve things early, uh, you got to learn how to sustain it. You know, I always say, um, people always say, you know, people always say when you get there, it gets easier. But I think when you get there, it gets harder. Because um, once you get it, you got it. But it's hard to sustain it than it is just to get there. So um, I got to, you know, just keep working and keep getting better and find a way to beat this season next year, which is the harder part. And I think we'll have to finish up here with uh, John and Joe. Micah, uh, fact about Devo Samuel real quick. Uh, it just seems like what he does is just so much different than most wide receivers, particularly with how much he carries the ball. Uh, how much are you kind of game planning for all the different things that he could potentially be doing? You know, uh, we're, I'm not trying to like focus on just one guy. I mean, and they, it takes 11 players, and, I mean, they got a whole bunch of talent across the board. But obviously, when you see him in the backfield, I mean, you got to treat him like a running back. And he got to get hit like a running back, got to get hit like everybody else. I mean, obviously, um, he's very explosive, very fast, strong runner. 
But in the day, you know, he got to come to the ground just like everybody else. And we got to treat him and game plan for the whole offense, not just part of the offense. So uh, he's definitely part of the game plan of just trying to control him when he's in the box and he's in that backfield. But other than that, same game plan.